Hi, I'm Josh Ozerski. I'm Rachel Ray's buddy on eHow.com. Today I'm doing Guinness Lamb Stew, a rich, earthy, intense, meaty stew. Basically, I've skipped ahead a little bit. I've already cooked some bacon up here with some olive oil, and I have a combination of both fats in the bottom of a big, heavy, clean pan. Now this here is lamb stew meat. Salt is going to go on it. This is just the way it came from the supermarket. And a little bit of pepper is going to go on it. And that is about as much seasoning as it's going to get. That said, it gets plenty of salt and pepper. You don't want to skimp on salt and pepper. It counts for so much. I take the lamb. I put it in some flour like this. Then it goes into the pan and it becomes nicely browned. Now, there's no egg wash here. There's no buttermilk. This is not like you're making fried chicken. You're just browning it up, preferatory to it being a stew. You can put in a bunch of pieces at once, but you don't want to throw in the whole bowl. Because if you do that, what's going to happen is it's all going to get sticky and clumpy and gray, and it's not going to brown right. I took the bacon out before I started doing this, just because I wanted more room. But believe me, the bacon's going back in. There's nothing happening to the bacon. Lamb is a strong flavor, and a lot of people find even baby lamb to be a little bit more than they can handle. So when I do stews like this for cold nights or at tailgates, I generally disguise the flavor somewhat by using a dark beer or even a stout like Guinness as the basis for the stew. That's what it should look like. See how it's brown like that? It's totally raw, but it looks nice, and it'll have a nice flavor. Let's say for the sake of convenience that I've cooked all my cubes of lamb like this. They're all browned on both sides. All right. So I take out all my lamb that's been browned up like this. All right. And now I'm going to brown some garlic in there, some onions, and some carrots. Now the carrots are big heavy coarse things. And they're not really going to brown per se. They're certainly not going to cook. But all those brown crusty bits that stuck to the bottom of the pan, what's going to happen is the onions are going to absorb them. Maybe take a little bit of salt as well, because onions like salt. They like it for its flavor. It makes it feel, it makes the onion feel giddy and girlish. And it also causes it to sweat off the pounds. If only I could do the same. The carrots, meanwhile, are getting a much needed glaze on them. The garlic is giving up its volatile oils. And now that this stuff has been in here a little bit. We're going to take the lamb and the bacon. We're going to put it all back inside. I'm going to add a bottle of Guinness. In a couple of minutes, that bottle of Guinness is finished. I'm going to put in a little bit of tomatoes. Whole tomatoes, like half a can of whole tomatoes. A little sweetness. A little tomato juice too, why not? And we're going to need some, ideally you would want lamb broth for this. Like, I mean, you probably don't have lamb broth hanging around. Even I don't have, like, I would love it to have like a dispenser. Like, that would be awesome. If I, if I had my dream home, I would have like the soda dispenser, but it would be like lamb broth, beef broth, chicken broth, you know, like stock, like for the different creamers. But uh, instead... Uh, my suggestion would be to use uh, Rachel's Beef Stock, which is a very good product. I would say, I would say put about a cup in. Basically, I now have meat and onions and carrots that are going to cook down in this Guinness broth. I'm going to bring the Guinness to, a, uh, to a, fiery, a fiery boil to cook off the alcohol. And... I'm going to add a little bit of tomato paste for sweetness. 
and body. And all that will remain then is to put in some barley. Now, uh, barley is one of those things, you know, like that has very little flavor of its own. What it does have is texture. Barley has a firmness to it, you know. So it's absorbing all the lamb juice and the fat juice and the bacon and all of that. But it has this like little intense kind of conviction to it, a firmness and a resolve that uh, it really stands up to what is essentially a, uh, a very highly fortified and robust stew. So I'll put in, I don't know. That seems like about enough. I mean, it's not, you don't want it to go too crazy. You know, the barley is small, but it, it, it tends to really absorb a lot. You know what, though? I'll put it all in. Okay, so I have it going. In fact, it's not too much barley. In fact, it's just right, because here's what it looks like. I already made one. It's thick and vicious, viscous and luscious. Vicious, too. Oh, my God, look at that. Tell me you don't want that on a cold night, huh? I'm Josh Ozersky with Lamb Barley Guinness Stew. I'm Rachel Ray's buddy, and this is eHow.com. <laughs>